yesterday can't cover up, or today you can say, Lord, today I'm entitled not to walk in love because yesterday I forgave this person, I forgave this person, I gave out, you know, all this. Today is all about me. No, God says it continues. Because if God was to take a break from loving you and I, we will be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says he neither sleeps nor slumbers. You know, if we pray and we don't walk in love, we won't get answers. We're just praying and means we're just praying in vain. How about the person that says, oh, you know, uh, I, I, I owed someone some money he didn't pay back. That's a very touchy subject. You know, you owed some, someone, sorry, someone owed you money. Someone borrowed money from you and didn't pay back. And there's tendency to be bitterness, you know. Uh, to allow bitterness, but I would say don't because you know, if you loaned out money to someone in love and you had an agreement, there should be an agreement anyway, otherwise, you give the money out. There should be an agreement, and the person did not meet his own part of the agreement, and then it means that it doesn't mean that you should kill the person, <laughs> but it depends on your level of work with God. You actually can go to God for wisdom, for instruction on what to do. You don't have to have the person's neck. You can forgive the debt. Hello. And you can decide that you let it go and next time you don't, you know, loan out money to the person because you've turned it into a gift, you know. Because when we look at it, you look at your life. I many times when I'm hurt, when I look at it this way that I am alive, I'm breathing because God is sustaining me. It's someone that is alive that can get offended. If someone that is alive that can say, oh, someone is owing me money, I'm going to go and collect it back. Hello. If you were to die today, it's all gone. That's it. In fact, that person is automatically released from the dead because no one else might know. No one in your family might know that that person is owing you. And so they're not able to go after that person to collect the money. And even if they go after the person to collect the money, the money does not come to you. Hello. You're gone, dead, <laughs> you know? So... I don't want people to wish me dead, <laughs> but to wish me alive. And you see, people think that way when you're a great source of blessing to them. In the Bible, there was a woman called Dorcas, you know, and this woman was a widow, but she continually gave to um, other widows. She helped them. She made clothes for them, and this woman died. And they went to the disciples, Peter and Kwan, and said, look, you have to come and raise this woman from the dead. <laughs> You've got to wake her up. They didn't want to accept, you know, her death. They were crying and talking about how much of a blessing she has been to them and wondering who was going to take care of them since this woman was so into taking care of them. You know, some of them say, oh, well, they have to put the attention of God. God will raise somebody else for them and all of that. But as far as they were concerned, they wanted her back. For oh, goodness sake, this woman was a widow herself. Shouldn't they leave her to go and rest in heaven and be reunited with her husband? <laughs> of course, there's no marriage in heaven anyway. But when she gets to heaven, she will recognize her husband. Hello. Yes. So, I mean, that could have been an opportunity to let her go. But they said no. And the disciples prayed and she came back to life. Hello. So you need to think. We need to think today. What will happen when I die? When? It's a matter of when. Hello? Because the Bible says appointed once. We will. It's a matter of when. It's a timing. And I pray that it will not be now. It will not be soon. And none of us will die young or an untimely death in Jesus' name. But when it happens, when? What will the people we leave behind say or think or imagine? So people are going to say, oh, thank God. She was such a stress to our lives, God forbid. Or are they going to miss you and I so much, you know, on this side of the world? We need to think about that. And I think that the extent of our love work will determine how much we are missed. You might say, yeah, I've been working in love, but are you ready to take it to another level? I want to take my love work to another level. I want to get to a place where I... I'm love personified. I want God to flow through me, you know, to love people, to, yes, even to love the unlovable. Yes. That difficult person, 
that nasty person, I want to be able to love that person. Because guess what? There's a reason why that person is nasty. That person has been hated. That person has been unloved. Maybe from a tender age by parents. That person has been through things in life and didn't know how to handle it. That's why they ended up being nasty and terrible. So we need to have compassion on such people. Hello. But just think about the fact that you are not that person. It's enough to feel compassion and to feel sorry. Next time you see a very angry person or someone that lashes out to you, think about it differently. First of all, say, Lord, I thank you that I'm not this person. <laughs> because that could be you of before. You might say, thank you, Lord, that I have been delivered from that. I was like that before. And then you have compassion on the person because the person is still struggling with that. Don't think about yourself. Why should she be so angry with me? Why is she talking to me like that? Pity that person and say, oh my God, he's still on that level. Oh my God, I've left that. So that means you are in a better position than the person. It's kind of a higher position and that makes you to have compassion and to pray for the person. And ignore the hurt that the person is doing to you at the moment. But to just go and pray and say, Lord, heal this person. You know, I was there before and you helped me. You know, even if you weren't there before, you had other issues too that you had to deal with. And I think that with that, the world is really a better place at the end of the day. Hallelujah. I trust that you have been blessed today. And I just like to pray. I like to pray with us. I like to pray with that person out there. You know, this message has touched you. You know, yes, that you need to take your love work to another level. You're struggling with that um, person in your life. Maybe it's your spouse. You're struggling with that child, you know, that you find it so difficult to love. The child is so rude all of the time. Ask God for grace. Let's ask God together for grace right now. Heavenly Father, I ask, oh God, concerning every single viewer, that, Lord, you will help everyone listening, everyone watching, to take their love walk to the next level. Lord, we ask for that grace to be able to love. We ask, oh God, for that grace to be able to love difficult people that you have placed in and around our lives. That one struggling with the difficult spouse, oh God, we ask for grace to be able to love. That one that has been hurt by adultery, Lord, we ask for grace to forgive, oh God. We ask for grace to love like you love, because that is your very nature. Thank you, Father. Above all, if there's anyone watching, you know, it would be so difficult to try to love in our own strength. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we need to accept him into our heart. That is the starting place. So if you want that relationship with Jesus, just say with me, Jesus, come into my heart. I've been a sinner. Forgive me. I believe you died on the cross. I believe you paid the price once and for all for my sins and for my shame and punishment. Come into my heart, Jesus. Live in my heart and love through me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next time, I trust God that he will keep you in his love and you will walk in love more than ever before. God bless you. Recently, at one of the government hospitals, I witnessed the way medical doctors and nurses treat most of the patients in a hostile and unchallenged careless way and this has formed hatred in my heart towards them. What do I do? My heart needs help. Love is to deliver good and excellent customer service and when we see people falling short of that we should just not become bitter but make up our mind and say you should become I will not and decide to be an agent and do something exactly and do something. Before. This one says based on what I've learned as a person to give to people in need and those who are poor. I realized that I've been taken for granted and turned into an ATM machine, <laughs> you know, a cash machine. Now I am more careful in my giving. As a result, they're now saying negative things about me that hurts. How can I balance giving? I, I will let you take that because you are a giver. <laughs> I know you, I know you you know, your greatest strength is, is to give. Well, yeah. And you and I have discussed a couple a lot. of times. Yeah, it um, has been the grace of God yes. in my life, honestly. Yes. Um, in giving to people who I need or people who I feel I need. Um, God has taken me through a journey mm. of giving right from my days in college, you know, when I began to grow as a young Christian. Mm. I didn't know there was a calling to give. Mm. Um, I read one of um, Kenneth, Hagin, Kenneth E. Hagin's book, mm. you know, of course, one of the fathers in the faith that has yeah. gone to be with the Lord. Um, 
And um, he wrote there that there are other ministries. I think that was from Romans 12. Uh, we knew of the fivefold ministry, the prophet, teacher, evangelist, mm -hmm. and all that. But I didn't know that there were other gifts. Like uh, the Bible says, you know, he that gives should give with simplicity. Yeah. He that teaches should teach. Yeah. You know, he that um, 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 shows kindness should wait on. You know, all of that. Mm -hmm. And he began to say that there was a ministry of giving. Mm -hmm. Although I believe that every believer is called to give. Yeah. We're all called to be givers. But, but as time went go, on, yeah, the extra um, a few years ago, I looked back and I saw that this was an area of calling for me because he, I always find myself in that situation. I'm always thinking about giving. Um, even when someone is not in need, I'm thinking, are you saying something here, you know, and all of that. I know but it's that. easy also to be taken advantage of, mm. to where people feel like, oh, she will solve the problem. Mm. And uh, people write we'll me all kinds of letters. Times, oh, yeah. I need this, um, um, this, and I need this for my child. Sometimes I'm looking at it. So this is a genuine case. Sometimes that. it's not a genuine case. How mm. have I been able to handle it? What I look at is that, first of all, of all, when I look at a letter or a request, mm. uh, please help me out with this. Because we've actually found out that some people have lied. Yeah. You know, for example, in our church, we have a team that helps us. Sometimes I pass it to one of the pastors and say, okay, yeah. look at this letter, please. You might need to investigate. Give me feedback. If it's authentic, you know what? Let's roll out the drums. Help yeah. this person with the school fees and whatever, whatever they're asking they, yeah. for. But sometimes I don't even go that length. Mm. I just sense. And I say, what if the person is lying? Sometimes I just feel, if the person is lying, the person is still in need. Mm. If you would lie to say, please help me, ma, my children need school fees and I can't, or I'm finding it difficult to feed, I need money, I need finances. Sometimes we just give without investigating it. Um, because for the person to be in the position to have to lie, yeah. the person is still he's, needy. He's still needy. The yeah. person is most likely needy, but lied it might lie about the area of need. Yes. That's why I said earlier when we were sharing that, sometimes helping people who are poor in need may not be about just giving them money or just look for food and give them. That sometimes helps temporarily. But if you can spare the time to really um, counsel them or refer them. them to someone who is a counselor or refer them to an empowerment program or refer them to someone who is good in helping people find their gifts and say, you know what, this and this is what you can yeah. do so that they can have the lasting yeah. help. Not so that, because I, I like the kind of giving where it's more like a one-time giving. I give you a certain amount of money and this is what you want to use it for. Yeah. What do you want to do in life? Oh, I want to do this, but I don't have money to set up. This so if we set you. you up, then you can continue to pay your bills. So don't, you know, you know, it's so, you know, so I would say that seller. don't feel you're being taken advantage. If you have been if you feel you have been taken for granted, you are the one now to structure your giving. Don't stop the giving, especially if you feel you are called to it. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, you'll be sad. You yeah. won't be happy. You, you, you find out that People there's something missing in you, your life. They always give you a whole lot of reasons <laughs> so, not to want to do what God has called, called you, you to do. do. So, so don't structure. You can structure it yeah. by asking questions. When yeah. someone says, I need you to loan me this, don't just roll out the stuff and then you find out that the person. Do a bit of homework, yeah. still with love in your heart, mm -hmm. still with eagerness. Mm -hmm. When people say now you're a bit more structured, as you grow, you might need someone to be able to help you. To, to Maybe a secretary, an assistant areas. to help you mm -hmm. keep the, the files and the yeah. data and all that. Yeah. And I tell you, you'll be doing it, but you'll be doing it on a bigger, on a higher level and at the same time with minimal hurts mm -hmm. because they will see that, yeah, you're on top of your game. And you're more, above all, you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If you're a Christian, I mean, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. He's in your heart and say, Holy Spirit, how do I go about this one? I'm, I'm, I'm filled with compassion. I want to help this person. But yeah. sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, no. Don't do don't it. Even there are times yeah. when he said, yeah. no, don't pay attention. And I'm like, Lord, but this person, and I know when God is like not giving a green yeah. light on something. Yeah. But I will look bad. I'm already known for, and that's another thing yeah. to be careful about. Yeah. When you have this tag of, I'm no, known no, for giving, you. then I must rise up to the occasion. God had to deal with me on that. Because in the Bible, you know, that great chapter on love that says, though I, I have all found faith that can move mountains, mm -hmm. I have all, I can speak all prophecies. Mm -hmm. And it says, even if though I, I give my body to be burnt and I do not have no. love, I am a sounding because symbol. Just like I'm just said, making noise. God yeah. dealt with me on that a few years ago when I was sharing and I thought, hmm, I was reading that and I thought, so... Those that feel like, yes, we give, we should be careful Even because we can get 
good heart. Just because like, I might be giving with the wrong motive. Yeah. I might be giving like, yeah, everybody I, knows I give. I so they come to me. Mm. How can I say no? Mm. Then they go back and say, oh, she's not what you claim she is. Mm. She's not really a giver. Mm. Because she said no to me. I asked her for this. She gave me. In fact, another time I wrote her a letter, she said no. And you people say that she she's a giver, giver and her ministry. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you can get to the point where you're trying to oh, perform. Yeah. So if you feel someone is so taking for granted, to learn you just have to, to have tough love as you are led, as you are led to please God. Mm. You can give without loving, mm. but you can love without giving. Mm. So I've also had to make sure that my love is in place. Because yeah. when I read that scripture, how can someone give his body to be burned? That means someone is about to die or whatever you say, take me instead, mm. burn me instead. But and the Holy Spirit showed me that, what if the person was tired of life and was looking for but a easy way to commit suicide? Because <laughs> to com imagine? it's hard to commit suicide. <laughs> yes. People that have committed suicide. Yeah. So what if so someone he, comes in like, we're going to shoot one of you people here. That won't be your portion. Who is going to go? <laughs> there are three people or five people in the room. And someone says, take me. And, they should, and other people say, oh, oh, what a loving person. This person he's giving up his life. For the Meanwhile, he's been for... thinking about suicide for weeks and months, and he's not been able to do it. So you see. He uh, gets to the bridge yeah. where the lake is. That third million bridge or wherever. I say, I'm going to jump in it. He doesn't have the courage. I'm going to hang myself. And then easy way out, someone comes with a gun. Gone. Hello, take me. <laughs> <laughs> the person didn't give his life out of love. Out of love. So the because motive, that, yeah. make sure your motive yes. is always clean. And yeah. over time, I've also now learned to say no. I don't mm. care whether people think oh, me I'm too. stingy. In mm. closing, I'd like to share these stories about Jesus in the Bible. John the Baptist was a cousin to Jesus. Mm. John the Baptist while on the earth, and Jesus was also doing his ministry. John the Baptist was an older cousin. Mm. He was born about six months before yeah. Jesus. We know that because mm. Mary was three months yeah. pregnant. I mean, mm. got pregnant when she went to, to, to her, meet, her cousin yeah. Elizabeth, who was now six months. John the Baptist commissioned Jesus into ministry. He validated his ministry. He said, uh, behold, behold, the Lamb the of Lamb God of that God. takes away the sin. Mm -hmm. He was very humble. He mm. wanted Jesus to baptize him. But Jesus said, no, you've gone ahead of me. Mm. It's in the scriptures. You have to do it. Yeah. Now, John the Baptist went about doing his ministry. Jesus came on the scene and pulled a bigger crowd. Mm. Even some of the disciples of John mm. went after Jesus. And people would come to John and say, ah. Even the people that have been following you, they've they left you now. Been... They're following you. Mm. And John was so mature and so good. Each time John would tell them, a man can receive nothing except, except it's given to him mm -hmm. from above. That's okay. That's his ministry. Didn't I tell you I was not the Messiah? Leave me alone. People will try to make him bitter. People will try to make him feel bad that Jesus That's has like, taken the shine mm. and the glory or whatever. Yeah. But he will say, didn't I tell you I was only a forerunner? Mm -hmm. Didn't I tell you there's a time coming, one that is greater than me? Now the time has come. So Leave me. Let yeah, him do his yeah. ministry. That is the way God has mm -hmm. planned it. Mm -hmm. But I found out that when John the Baptist was in prison, he let down his guy. His love walk, I mean, he had dropped. taken it to yeah. a new level. His love walk dropped. dropped. The flesh came he in came a bit, which shows you that he's still human. Yes, the human when was always When Jesus coming. did not visit him in prison, and the Lord shared, showed me some things from that passage mm -hmm. that it's not about being emotional, because mm -hmm. I can be emotional about poor people, oh, this person needs help, yeah. da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah. and I'm almost just suffering burnout just mm -hmm. because I'm trying to help people. Mm -hmm. A time came that I was almost even leaving the study of the word mm. because I'm going about helping people. Mm. Uh -uh. Jesus said, look, God said, look at it. Jesus did not go. And I can't say Jesus, Jesus was not a bad person when he was on. He did not visit he John the Baptist. <laughs> and when John, his cousin, mentor, whoever, I mean, what he was, sent his disciples, I mean, people visited John in prison. And one day he said to them, he said, go and ask Jesus is if he is the Messiah. I mean, why you were the one that introduced him. Meanwhile, you were the so one that said he is the Messiah. Behold, God showed you by revelation Lamb. before he yes. walked a single... Now he's working miracles. You are saying, go and ask him. So by asking that question to the people that visit, you've heard, you sowed a seed of... of a seed bitter. that is not love yeah. in the hearts of the people mm -hmm. that you sent to him. Mm -hmm. It was a sarcastic thing. And mm -hmm. that was because he felt he the pain. He didn't feel loved as a... Human being, as a natural person. As if you didn't come to visit me in he prison. He wanted that. Yeah. And that happens to us many yeah. times. Your father and your mother should love mm -hmm. you. That is it. But there are some yeah, people, some you have that situation where your father has not been there for mm -hmm. you. Your mother rejected mm -hmm. you. And it should not be. There are few cases like that. Yeah, you, of course Still you feel it. don't... Mm. Don't yes, let offenses don't come. Don't let offenses come to the point where you are bitter. Still so say, Lord, you only know why this is happening take me up. Be, let me know your love. Mm -hmm. So John should have said, I don't know why Jesus will not visit me. I know he's a good man. Mm. I know he's full of love. I know he's the son of God. Oh. I know he's, but Lord, okay, 
whenever I see him, whenever we meet, whether he's in heaven or whatever, he will explain. He should have still forgiven Jesus. Mm -hmm. I, it, it, I, I felt I somehow, I felt bad because I felt John had done so well. Mm. The Bible says of all women that are born of a woman, no. there's none no. like John like the Baptist. There will be, never be any like him. And that's because he knew his calling mm. and he stayed true to it to the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to be Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said, leave me with locusts and honey in the wilderness. Yes. I'm different. He stayed but he with it. But he is the Messiah. He is the one. And, you know, Jesus re replied when they went to tell Jesus that hey, John, John in prison said, we should ask you if you are the Messiah. Jesus was shocked because Jesus expected his love walk to, to be gone. higher. Yeah. Jesus expected to hear a message like, ah, Jesus, hey, John's, John wants you to visit. visit. John is saying, please, could you spare time out of your busy it's schedule to come and visit me? <laughs> to visit me. But he's now denying you. Please, your... I need, you know, because sometimes we as human beings, and even yeah. in marriages, too, and yeah. we don't say what we really want, yeah. but we are sending hidden yeah. messages. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're sending hidden yeah. messages. Say what you want. Confront and say, look, I would love you to visit. Mm -hmm. I miss you. Yeah. I know your visit will lift my spirit. They're not saying it the way it is. After all, he was in prison for, for speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. Because he told um, Herod that it was a wrong thing to have his, his, um, what he, his brother's wife. Yeah. Adultery. And, of, and, and they threw him in prison. When we are disappointed at those we love. At those we love. We seem to send out negative Jesus information about back me about up. Them. He knew that I didn't do wrong. You know? mm. If he did wrong, he could say, okay, good for you. So far. But yeah. He knew I didn't do yeah. wrong. Mm -hmm. You see, so that shows you that even men of God yeah. need, it is only Jesus that was in this world without sin. He was the, the only one that did not fall. at every, every point. point. But, but John the Baptist was, was not born mm -hmm. of, he was not, I mean, his father and mother, we knew them. Uh, Jesus even, was the son of God. God. That was where the difference yes. was. So he was able to rise. And Jesus sent a and message and us. said, go and tell him. Yes. The lame walk. The blind. the blind see. Blessed is he who is not offended. offended in me. And that is why I think one of our goals should be, the Bible says, you know, great peace have they that love your word and nothing shall offend them. Mm. Lord, take me to the place where I'm not offended. Mm -hmm. Offenses will come. The Bible says they, offenses they will come, will come say, to them. So my own verse is like, Lord, offenses come at us, but let me not be the one dishing out offenses. Yes. Then two, help me to and be less offended. Mm -hmm. Help me to be less angry. Help me that even when people expect that, ah, you should be angry. See what they're saying. And I'm just like, forgive them, uh, yeah. Lord, for they it's don't know what the... they are doing. And, and that is what Jesus said on love. the cross. Mm -hmm. It's a higher life. Yeah. It's a Once great Once you God are grounded in love, the things that people expect you to be offended oh at. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, you will even be shocked that why are they reacting that way? Why are they expecting that? That was just a moment. Nothing will touch yeah. you because yes. you are yes. full of the love yes. of God. And yes. you yourself, you are grounded yes. in the knowledge of his yes. love for you. Yes. Of course, through it all, for we still you. respect John the yes. Baptist. I mean, that is the only place where I've seen that. Yeah. He had that just a little faltering. Yes. Every other place he but was almost But I think it was above. also still symbolic, like we all. It was symbolic. God showed me so many things yes, about me. Yeah. Like, don't be emotional yes. in this giving. Yeah. Jesus did not go. There are some he things had his reasons. You just have to be led by the Therefore, at that God. time, John, disciple, John the Baptist and his disciples and some other people must have felt like, ah, oh, Jesus is being wicked. But he's the one that said we should visit people in prison. Yeah. Visit people who are sick. But and he didn't go. So that means that the law of not. when the Holy Spirit is telling you do something, don't do something, that's a higher law than it's a higher law and than you don't do things feelings. emotionally. Mm -hmm. Jesus probably was saying, Look, mentor, but man of God, you should know. Mm -hmm. You know how these things are. Mm -hmm. I've even been planning to come, but one woman with issue of blood will stop me, me on the way. The Another one, person will stop for their miracle. Me, and this what? is the ministry that you <laughs> yourself commissioned yes, me. So it. don't be offended. Let you should make excuses for me that yes. I know Jesus Instead loves me. So in negative I know seeds. Jesus, my cousin, the Messiah loves me, but he's just been too busy yeah. for whatever. But that does not mean he does not love me. Mm -hmm. That means even when we don't see God show up for us immediately, mm -hmm. we should not doubt, doubt that he love. loves us. John the Baptist was doubting doubt. Jesus' love, but I know that Jesus loved him. Mm -hmm. And after that, John the Baptist was beheaded. Yeah, there was no story that Jesus saw him again. Yes. But they met themselves yes. in heaven. Yes, and Jesus I'm sure they will understand also, why by the now. Lord was also showing me that, you know what? Jesus knew that by the time he was going to die, mm. a shameful death on the cross, John won't be there. Yeah, because he has to go John won't be there to say, John, help me, I'm on the cross. Visit <laughs> <laughs> me, help me to carry my cross. Cr it's like, there's a time for each person yes. to carry their cross. 
They are so don't look to me. So John, don't, be don't look to me. Look to God, our Father. In those seasons, when nobody it's shows up to love, love you, it's that is tough love. love. Yes, a love work you have to work love. with God it's alone. So, <laughs> just ATM or no ATM machine, whatever, whenever you give, <laughs> do it out of love for yeah. the right motive yes. that God is leading you, not just to prove to other people that you are all that much of yes. a giver and you are that spiritual. Yes. God bless you. It's been a wonderful time with oh, you, Elishama. It's been, fun, and I trust God, you know, that we've been blessed. And the challenge today is, Take your love walk to the next level. Can we pray? Father, in Jesus' yes, name, help Lord. us. Yes. We ask for your grace, oh yes, God. Lord. Help us to love like you do. Yes. Fill us with your Holy Spirit yes, afresh, Lord. oh God. Yes. When we are running low, when our emotions are running low, help us, Holy Spirit, to forgive those who have hurt us. Yes. Enlarge our hearts in love yes. so that through us the world will be a better place. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Till I come your way again next time, stay blessed and keep loving, don't stop. God bless you. Okay.